All right, you're 10. So let's start with the next part of this topic. Now, if you remember back to the start of the week, we did this is when we started this, and I think we've done really, really good progressing this far. Um, I, I would say you're probably one of the classes in this year 10 cohort that's a little bit ahead compared to the other one. Oh, good. Well done. Okay, because on the schedule, it does say we this is something that we're supposed to start next week, I think. I'll look at it later. But anyway. It's good that we're up to here because I think this is one of the parts in this topic specifically that a lot of you guys are going to cry about. Okay. Oh, yes, I know. Okay, because we're going to be talking and learning about solving your equations. Okay, so we're going to jump back and forth between exercises. So we're going to go to chapter one now. You remember last chapter was like 9G, 9F. Now we're up to chapter one because there is some uh, connection between the both that we want to show you guys okay and this is also one of those topics i uh, i would say that comes up a lot in year 11 general maths so if you're going to be doing it next year make sure you're pretty good at this um so that yeah you can you know progress really well in your math math journey next year all right but today's topic is on your linear relations but more specifically solving equations okay that's the main thing that we're looking at for this topic so your learning intention today is to be able to solve, okay? There is, big keyword there, solve a equation. Okay, solve your linear equations by preserving equivalence. Now, a lot of big words there, okay? But it's all, all you're doing is uh, proving that a specific letter is this number. Okay, that's all it is. So I'll, I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we've also... Uh, got unknown variables. So hopefully you'll be able to identify what a variable is or what an unknown variable is. Represent situations using equations. Okay, so representing situations. Okay, so you've got a certain situation and you want to be able to represent it in a way we can maybe make a guess or calculate something. And again, we'll talk more about that later. And then identify the order of operations for solving equations. Now, a lot of words there, but it's all about solving. Let me see. Sequential order of solving equations. And then the main thing I would say is be able to just solve um, your equations. Okay. That's, these are the main things we want you to be able to do by the end of today. And look, we're going to break it down because we do have, uh, I think this uh, part of the topic will probably uh, it will take a while for you to get your head around if you haven't done it already uh, in year nine. Okay. All right, we're going to start off with an activity, but actually, no, before that, before I even talk about that, does anyone know anything or any of these words up here? Like, can you tell me anything you know about anything I've highlighted? Does anyone? Oh, yeah, variable? Okay, Jamie, what's a variable? It can be like, it will change. It can be. Good, so the variable changes. Very nice, very nice. I like that. Okay, what else? What else? Anything else? So the variable is the thing that changes. Because it's variable, it changes, literally, like varying, okay? It's a variable. So that's the one thing that probably changes in, a, in an equation. All right, good point. Anyone else? What other words do we know here? Anything else? Let me ask this. Do you guys know what the word linear means? Straight line. Straight line. Good. Okay, so I'm going to put that in changing. It changes. Straight line, so that means straight line. Okay, any other words that pop up here? Anything else? What about equations? What's an equation? You know what that is? Anyone know what what is an equation? Think about what this. What does that mean? Equa. Someone said it. Say it louder. Something to do with the equal sign. Okay. Like, for example, 3 uh, plus 2 equals, okay, for example, 5. That's got an equal sign in it. But what if I was to change this now to something like this? Oh, ooh, look at that. Oh, no, algebra. That is what you would call an equation, okay? There's an equal sign in the equation. And when it comes to solving an equation, Okay, have a think. What do you think it means to solve the equation? 
Find out the answer. So what is the answer that you are actually looking for, Francis, in this equation? Oh, five. Well, not quite, because I already oh, know that's five. X. Yeah, you're looking for this guy. What is X? Okay. Not your X partner. Okay. What is, okay, what is that number? That's what it means to solve that equation. What is X? Okay, now you can look at it and say, Oh, mister, I know 3 plus something equals 5. The something has to be 2, bro. True that. Okay, but there are certain ways that you can do this without just looking at it and guessing it or like calculating it in your head. Okay, and that's all we're going to learn about today. Understanding how to solve these equations. Okay. All right. So let's start off with this little activity. I'm going to pause it here. All right, guys, make sure we're giving Junior our full attention. You can just write here, yeah? And if you need to well, rub... Francis came up with it, so that's why... You need to rub something out here, press that. Oh, yes. Francis, what, what do we do? Okay, all right. Francis is talking through it. Yeah, so... What do we do? I forgot. All right, if you need a calculator. That's... Let's get it through. All right. all right, yeah? Okay, but anyway. All right, what do you do? Tell me. How do you work this out? <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. All right, just start. How did you get your answer? Uh, tell me, actually, do you what? Get 11. Ele okay, did everyone get 11? Yeah. Okay, oh, good. Okay. How did we get to 11? So. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? Don't press the button. Just press oh. It. Yeah, it's just. So you've got 5, or 8. Oh, fuck. No? It's alright. 8 uh -huh. times. Times. Okay, why eight. would you start with that, Junior? Because you did 8 turn ups per day. Yeah, so how much over the 5 days altogether? 40. 40, good. All right, good start. Equals 40. Uh-huh. So 46, that's okay. 40. No, 40, 40, 40. 40, okay, 40. Ooh, so 46, that's okay. And then... And then what happens? Uh, You're on the right track, man. You're doing good. Then we add all these up. Which ones? Show me. Uh, Show four, me. five, okay. five. Okay, so the ones that he did, so you got the four plus the five. Five. Plus five again. Good. And then plus the 15. Equals Franny. 29. 29. Yeah, Good. Okay. Very nice. So, if he did 40 for the five days and he did 29 Two. on the four days, how much did he do on the fifth day, which is Friday? So, what do you do now? 40. 40. 49. 49. Equals. Equals. 11. Yeah, so. 11. Oh, did everyone ask 11? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, uh, well done, Junior. Well done. <laughs> All right, look at that. One minute off. Pay attention for now. Well done. Working it out. I love it. Okay. Hey, see how hard it is to write it? It's 40 not. <laughs> All right, well done, guys. So, Junior was very correct. I assume no one looked at the solutions, but it's all there. Okay. But this is the basic premise for using your algebra skills. So you're going to need to know how to multiply, you're going to need to know how to add, you need to know how to subtract, and I'll add that you also need to know how to do division. But apart from that, if you can do something like this, I would say chances are algebra isn't that hard. It actually isn't. If you can do this, algebra is all G, bro. 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 <laughs> okay, let's get in, back into it. So as we've learned in, remember univariate, uh, with the previous data that we learned about, it's just one variable. Well, well, now we're learning about bivariate, yeah? We started that this week. And you're looking at two variables, okay? Two variables which are related, okay? And the idea behind it is you want to compare and find relationships. So remember the relationships I talked about, the strength and the direction, okay? This is all still connected to that. And the relationship between uh, these two variables can be described in linear. So remember, linear means straight line. Whenever you're working with an equation, generally speaking, it creates some sort of straight line. Okay, whether it's positive or negative. Okay. Uh, a linear relation can be with, a, and remember, equation. So remember what that looks like. Uh, I think in this case, we haven't, we're not going to go through it today, but... We're going to go through at some point. Do you, remember, do you guys know what this is? Yeah, what's this bad boy? Y equals MX plus C. Yeah, what is it? Anyone remember? It's a linear equation? Yes. It is for the graph. Very good. 
Okay, yeah, there's no special name for it, but what I do want us to know is that this equation is going to pop up very often, okay? So that linear equation will pop up. Yes, mx plus c. Okay. And we'll come across that very often in this topic. So in essence, the main thing that I want you to get, so just don't worry too much about everything here, but this final statement is what we're aiming to do today. What I want us to be able to do is to be able to solve an equation okay, and make one side equal to the other. That's what he talked about at the start of this topic, but it's all about solving an equation. Okay, That's what I want you to get out of this, solving your equation. All right, let's do this. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we need to look at some skills that you need to know. There's something in algebra that I know a little bit annoying because uh, maybe you forgot it or like what the heck is the point of mixing letters and numbers together. In, uh, I would say if you ever get into like IT or generating um, apps and that kind of thing, or if you ever get into like engineering or if you ever want to do even like building and construction, there is always an aspect of algebra in there, always. Okay, so... Uh, this is the first skill that we need to learn about, which is simplifying by collecting your like terms. Oops. Like terms is the main thing there. So when we talk about a like term, it's when you've got a variable. So I remember Jamie mentioned variable, the thing that changes. So think of the variable as the letter. Okay, it's the letters in a equation. So it's putting all the letters together that are the same. Okay, that's what it means. That's what a like term is, where the letters are exactly the same. Okay? Uh, in other words, they are what you call a like term. Okay, like terms. So we need to be able to do this skill, collecting a like terms. So what we need to do is looking at this equation, let's identify first and foremost, what are the letters that you're working with? Jacob, look at this equation. What letters are you working with here? X and Y, good, okay. So, are there any other letters? Not really, okay. So that's fine, there's only X and Y. So what you wanna do is put all the X's, because they love being together, and all the Y together, okay. All the X and the Y's together. So what I like to do here, and you don't have to do this, but it just makes it a lot clearer. You, could, you put all the, two, the X's together, so it's gonna be two X, oops, wrong color. Two X and this one X plus one X. And notice how I included that plus in front of the one with that one X. And then the other thing you need to put together is that plus 11 Y and then the minus six Y. And the reason why I read, I did it like this is so you can actually see, all right, these are the ones that are going to be together. So if I want to solve this, okay, I can only do this by uh, putting the like terms uh, well with each other. Okay, so when I talk about putting them with each other, you're going to have to add or more, uh, minus them. So if you look at this 2x plus 1x, so have a think about this. You've got two x's and you add one more x to it. How many x's have you got? You have three x's. Okay, three x. And then the other one, you've got 11 y's. Take away six of the y's. What's 11 minus six? Five y's. So plus five y. And there is the simplified version of that year, um, expression. In this case, so 3x plus 5y. Let me put some equal signs here as well. Okay, so that just keep that in mind. Yeah? You want to put all the letters that are the same together. Okay, so all that too. So it's just adding and subtracting. So you've got to get good at it. All right, let's look at this second one. Let's go with, oh, I'm going to ask Michaela this time. Can you tell me what are the letters you're working with here? X and Y again. Okay, but what's different this time, Mickey? There's a two. Good. Where, where is the two? Good. There's twos next to the Y. Okay. So what you want to make sure is, uh, what you want to be mindful of is you actually cannot put this guy and this guy together. Why is that? Yeah, because this y is actually different to that y. They're not the same. This is a y to the power of 1. This is a y squared. So again, you want to make sure you put the ones that are exactly the same together. Now, the ones that are the same, I'm going to ask Emma, which ones here are like terms? What would you say? Um, 
Good, the three x y squared and the negative five y squared x. Why are they the same though? Kiara, do you know why they're the same? Even though they look a bit different, why are they the same? Good, they still have the same, well, let's say they have the same variables. Because they still share the same x and they still share the same y squared. Even though they're in different orders, they're actually still the same. So to put that all together, it's going to be 3 x y squared minus 5 y squared x and then this guy will be by himself plus 2 x y so again like terms yeah you want to make sure they're exactly the same even if the order of it is a little bit different they're still going to be the same so let's put it all together what's 3 minus 5 say that again negative 2 is that what you're going to say ecclesia well done so negative 2 x y squared okay and then plus 2 x y by itself so it doesn't need to do anything and now if you can do this as one of the skills well done okay i, I guarantee you uh, algebra isn't that hard it's all just looking at the numbers and letters making sure that they're the same uh, just for this skill in particular okay any questions let me let me just do one more make it make it a bit tricky Let's go with negative 4x squared plus 3xy minus um, x squared. Okay, let's do that for example. Just as an example. Okay, write it down in the bottom for me so you have it with you. Let me just scroll down real quick. Okay. Okay, negative 4x squared. And then plus 3x squared y minus x squared. All right. So what are the like terms here, guys? Anyone want to tell me? I'm going to ask uh, Jonathan, what are my like terms in this uh, expression? What's the same here? Good. So this negative 4x squared and this negative x squared. Okay, so let's put them together. Negative 4x squared minus x squared and then this 3x squared plus y isn't the same as the other ones okay so plus 3x squared y okay so finalizing that Alyssa what's negative 4 minus 1 I have a think anyone know what's negative 4 minus 1 negative 4 minus 1 negative oh not quite not quite have a think negative 5 Okay, negative 5. Plus 3. Okay, now, have a think. Why did I go negative 4 minus 1? What's in here? Anyone know what's in here? It's just a 1, but I didn't put it in. Normally, you'll find in most equations, if there is nothing in front of that letter, you have to assume there's a 1 in there. It's annoying, I know, but just be mindful there is actually a one there. I just didn't put it in. Okay, you'll come across it in your sacks. Um, and yeah, so don't get confuzzled over, over it. All right, so that is only if you're adding and subtracting. So think about that, yeah? Like terms, when you're adding and you're subtracting, that's what you're doing. Oops. Okay, so with like, when it comes to like terms and adding and subtracting, yeah, this is what you're doing. Think about that, yeah? You can only add or subtract if they are exactly the same. Let's move on. I'm just going to see how far we can go. We'll just do this and then this and then we'll take a... We'll start. Okay. The next one is now simplifying by collecting like terms. So now we're multiplying and dividing. Okay. So this is a little bit different now. Adding and subtracting is one. Multiplying and dividing is a different thing. Okay, so this one here, when you're multiplying or dividing. So when it comes to multiplying, okay, when you're multiplying two of these together, okay, what happens is you multiply the big numbers, okay, and then you're putting the little numbers together. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so let's do this as an example. 2x times 4xy. What is 2 times 4? So start off with that. 2 times 4 is 8, okay? Now, when you're multiplying the letters together, x times x, all you're doing 
is you add it, you're essentially adding the, the coefficients, so the little numbers on the top together. What's this x1 plus that x1? x2. There's going to be two of those powers there. x2. And then with the y, okay, can I add that y to anything else? No, it's by itself, so it just stays like that. Okay, so all you're doing is multiplying the big numbers, okay, and then all the letters, you're just going to add the little coefficients on top of them. Okay, have I lost anybody yet? It's not that hard. Yeah, multiply big numbers, add the little letters on top. Uh, another example could be, okay, let's try another one. Let's just add it in. Let's say you have 3x squared y times uh, 2y squared. Actually, I'll get 2x, xy. Let's go with that. Put a 3 there, just to make it interesting. All right. So, same principle, yeah? You're, you're multiplying the big numbers. So, 3 times 2 is what, guys? 6. 6, good. Okay, now, look at the x's. Okay, what do I do with the x's? So, the, that's got an x squared. That has a little 1 on top. I didn't write it, but it's there. So, how many x's will you have there? 3, so x to the power of 3. Okay, and then, Francis, the last one, what happens to the y's? You you got a little one here. I didn't write it, but it's there. So you've got three here already, and you've got one there. So there's four y. So y to the power of four. That's it. That's all you're doing with these. Easy. Okay, not too hard. Not too hard. Do you have to write them on your Oh, as an example, yes, if you want to. It's good to have because they didn't write enough examples, I think. Okay. Let's keep going. I'm going to look at example two. I'll leave that there so you can copy it. But when it comes to division, it's the other way now. Yeah. So you're dividing the big numbers. But what do you think happens to the number, uh, the letters? Anyone know? So in, in this case, when I was multiplying, I was adding those coefficients. Good. You're subtracting this time. Okay. Let me just get rid of that. So let's do this one. So for this example here. Okay, the big letters, you uh, the big numbers, sorry, you're dividing. So what's 10 divided by 2? If you can't do division, please use your calculator. Yeah, not, no shame in that. 10 divided by 2 is? Five. Good. 5. So I've divided these guys. It's 5. Okay, now you have an A here and also an A there. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a fraction here like that because there's still going to be something relevant here happening. What happens to the A's? So I've got an A there and an A there. What do you think happens to them? What's 1 minus 1? None. So the, or both of the A's have disappeared. They're gone now. Now, with the B, is there a B on top of the fraction line? No, but there is a B on the bottom, but you can't do anything with it. So it's just 5 over B. Just got to leave it as that. Let's try another one as an example. All right? So you guys can get this. Let's go with 12 um, A squared B3. Over, let's go with mm, four, and then we'll do a four, b one, or just b. Ooh, tricky. Okay, so let's divide the big numbers. Twelve divided by four is going to become three. Okay, and let's look at the letters. Okay, a squared. There's an a two at the top, but then there's an a four in the bottom. Have a think. Okay. Remember, you're subtracting this time. Okay, so this 4, take away that 2. On the bottom, you're going to have a? A2. Okay, what about the Bs? Where's the B going to go? So it's B3, and there's a B1 up here. So B minus, or well, 3 minus 1 is 2. So there's a B squared on the top still. Now, these questions do get a little bit more complicated. I don't want to go a little bit further than this just yet. Because I don't want to confuse anyone. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Soz, not soz. But it does get a bit trickier. Just, just bear in mind that if you can do this, I think you're like 75% of the way there. That's good. All right. Can I go to the next one? Or are you still copying this? I'm going to go to the next one. And then that'll be it. Okay? And then we'll start doing some exercises. Woo! Okay.
Let's try these ones. Okay, now we've got the distributive law. This is the last one for now, and then we'll start working. So when you have something like this, okay, brackets and numbers and letters outside. Okay, yes, brackets first and all that, but there's also some rules that you need to know when you do these equations, okay? Uh, there, you need to know how to multiply, which most of you do, and you need to be able to multiply numbers and letters together. All right, so let's look at this. All you're doing with these, these sorts of questions is the number on the outside, okay, you've got to multiply with all the numbers and letters on the inside. Okay, so let's start with that. The first one here. Ruby, okay, what's 2 times x? Do you know what 2 times x might be? Good, okay, because technically in front of that x, there's a magic 1 that you don't see. So what's, remember, you multiply the big numbers together. 2 times 1 is just 2. And there's no other letters I can multiply, so it's just 2x. Easy. All right, let's go. Jeremy, what's 2 times 4? There's your answer. 2x plus 8. Done. Not that hard, okay? That's the first basic one. So 2 times x, and then 2 times 4. All right, not that hard, okay? Well, these ones are not, not that crazy. But let's try, let's try this one. Ooh, okay, a bit trickier. Remember, in front of uh, the letters that, that are by themselves, there's a little magic one that you don't see right there. Okay, so let me ask, where am I asked yet here? Emma. Sorry, I looked at the wrong person. Sorry, Elizabeth. You both started with me. I'm so sorry. Okay, you've got negative 3x times x. Okay, remember in front of that x, there's a magic one. So what, how, what do you need to do? Multiply the big numbers together. So what's negative 3 times 1? Good, so negative 3, okay, and then what happens to the x's? x times x, you get x to the power of 2, okay, you add them together. Okay, it's going to be a challenge, let's go with Tony, here we go. Okay, let's do this one in green now. Okay, what's negative 3x times negative y? Okay, you mentioned it before, when you put two negatives together, so in front of this y, there's a negative 1. Okay, negative 3 times negative 1, what is it? 3, what's 3 times 1? 3, okay, when you have two negatives together, it becomes a positive, so it just becomes positive 3. Okay, last thing, what's x times y? Just x, y, okay, you can't do anything to it, because none of them are the same, so it just stays as x, y. Ah, uh, you did good, you did good, okay? There it is. Okay, so what I've essentially done is negative 3x times x gives you negative 3x squared, and then negative 3x times negative y is negative 3xy. Okay, that's all that's happened. All right, last one, and then we're going to start working. Example number three. It's actually the same as these two, it's just twice as long now. Okay. Let's do this. So the first one is going to be 3 times x is 3x, and then 3 times 2 is just 3 times 2, which is 6, so plus 6. Easy. All right, these ones here. Okay, negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Okay, it's just 4 times 2, and there's no other letters that I can make it work with. And then the last one here is negative 4 times negative 4. Okay, who have I asked yet? Ecclesia. What's 4 times 4? Okay, and you have two negatives together? It becomes a? A positive. So the answer is just positive 16. Easy. Right? Not that hard. Okay. Now, this isn't the final answer yet though. Have a look. Do we have any like terms that we can put together? 3x. And what's the other one? Good. Negative 8x. And there's another like term here. Junior, do you know what it might be? What's the other like terms here that you can put together? Good, plus 6 and plus 16. Okay, so let's put them all together. So 3x minus 8x plus 6 plus 16. Okay, so that would be, what's 3 minus 8? Use your calculator if you don't know it, but negative 5. And then x, and then 6 plus 16 is 22. Okay. 
I know. 